Hi everybody and welcome back to another build video. Today we're building the Acorn 2 SDR receiver from Kanga Products and I'm going to go through the quick build. So looking at the board you can see that all the components are nicely laid out. You can also see that the silk screen has got a beautiful uh, display on the top and uh, everything has got nice spacing behind it. Now this is a prototype kit that I'm building here so I suspect that when you get your kit it will all be bagged up into different parts and different sections. Um, I'm having to do that here for myself, uh, which is no bad thing really because it gives me time to go through and double check and make sure I've got everything and uh, just sort out my workspace for the uh, build. So the first step in the build process is the power supply. And uh, this is just a voltage regulator with some capacitors and a couple of limiting resistors as well. So I'm going to start off, the first component in the board is an electrolytic. It's always difficult trying to find the first component to go in the board there. And I'll just show you here, look how easy that pops in and how well the silk screen supplied shows us how, uh, how the board will, will look. So with every component that I put in, I bend the legs over and solder in place check to make sure that the solder is okay, it's all good, and trim the legs off. I've said it before, but just repeat until complete. And there we go, those two electrolytics and two uh, bead capacitors in place. Uh, there's 10 bead, of bead capacitors that need to go in, they're all the same value, so I'm just going through here, soldering them on the board, taking my time, not rushing. The pleasure is in the build, as they say. So I'm just going through and finishing it off. And at the end of this phase, just check again, make sure you're happy with everything that you've completed. So resistors now, these fold flat against the board. You can see here that they fold nice and tight against the, the bottom of the edge of the board. And just like before, trim the legs off as we complete. So now the uh, voltage regulator itself, you can see that on the silk screen here, it shows us that the center leg needs to be bent back. And uh, the one that I've got here, all the leads are in the straight line here. So it's just a case of manually bending the lead back. And then what I do here is I use a pair of pliers just to straighten that leg back out with the kink in place. Just like that. That then fits into the board nice and neatly and doesn't go all the way down to the board edge so you can actually see how well it is fitting in place and whether it's going to short out at all. So uh, that's the way I install these little ICs. And uh, just the protection diode now needs to go in. Make sure that you check your orientation. Again, on the silk screen, it's pretty clear which way around the diode needs to go. Okay, and then the last phase of the uh, power supply part is to put the Molex connector in. And uh, the trick with the Molex connectors is to make sure the pins are facing out like this. And I'm just going to double check that that's correct with the wire here to make sure that the plus goes to plus and the negative goes to negative. You can only fit this plug in one way around, so make sure you get the socket on the correct way. And when you actually come to soldering the, the, uh, the plug, make sure that you either hold it down with some tape or do what I'm about to do, and that's just tack one pad down, make sure it's square and flat and you're happy with it. And then carry on and solder the next pad. Okay, so just a final visual check, make sure you're happy with everything on the board, and this looks good. And now we're just gonna do some voltage checks. So I'm gonna check all the ICs, uh, make sure I've got five volts across the um, inputs of the ICs. So there's four ICs on this board, three of them need five volts, and one of them needs between nine and 12 volts, depending on your power source. So I'm using a battery here, and you can see that in the background and uh, that's given me about 12 volts, so uh, I should expect to see that on the final IC. 
and bingo. That'll do. Bandpass filter build now. So we've got the bandpass filter. We've got some IC sockets uh, that we need to put in. And we're gonna use this uh, SIP connector as well to connect the crystals. So I'll put that in there now. Uh, some more connectors, some inductors, jumpers and capacitors. So I'll start with the, the capacitors. Make sure you check the values of the capacitors. They all look the same, the uh, ceramic discs, but uh, I can assure you that they're all different values. So just check and double check as you go. So I've installed the uh, bandpass filter and now we need to install some jumpers. So we've got two jumpers to fit here, which uh, we, we need to fit in. And there's two Molex connectors and the antenna Molex connector, which need to be installed at the same time. So here we are, that's all installed nice and neatly. I've used tape here to hold these in place whilst I was soldering them in. And now we're going to fit the IC socket. So the IC socket, you can see it's got a dimple at one end. The silk screen has got a nice uh, diagram to show which way the dimple goes. Um, that gives you an idea of which one is pin one. So make sure that you, uh, you follow that in place. Now I found that the IC sockets were quite loose on the board. So what I've done here is I've, uh, I'll put the IC socket in place and then I just turn it over and I bend just one or two pins just to hold it in place. And I'm using a probe lead here, which isn't the best tool to be honest with you. And then when I come to soldering, I solder one other pin, only one, and I'll double check to make sure I'm happy with its alignment and whether it's flat on the board. And this one's not quite flat, so I'm just gonna use my finger to hold it in place as I retack it. And then just go through and solder all the pins. And as you can see, the camera's in the worst position here. So let me zoom in and show you that a bit better. There we go, and I'm just working through each pin here. Job done. So a bit later on in the day now, turn the lights on, it's getting a bit late now. So uh, I've got all the IC sockets in place. It's looking really good. And I'm gonna do another voltage check. I'm not really applied many more components to the board, but I wanna make sure that I'm still getting the voltage on the IC sockets. So uh, better view of, uh, of that. So again, pin 16 on IC1, that's giving me a good five volts. Pin 14 on IC2. That's giving me five volts. I'll just check if I've got uh, between nine and 12 volts here. Yep, that's good. And I'll just do the final one as well. And I'm happy with that. So this is what we're gonna to use to connect the crystal with. That needs to go on the board here in these three pins here. So what we're going to do is we're gonna use some cutters and we're gonna cut three pins off, making sure it doesn't fly across the room. And again, you can use some tape to solder that in place to keep it firm or do what I'm going to do. And that's use the edge of the board to uh, hold it in place as I solder it. A little bit tricky because the, the board wants to wander around. But again, I just solder one lead and check I'm happy with it and then carry on through the rest of the pins. And now onto the final stage. This is now building the actual receiver. Um, there's lots of things to fit on here. There's lots of capacitors, so let's make a start with those. I'm doing two at a time here because these are, are in fact right next to each other, so it makes sense for me to put them in place and make sure that they're level at the same time. It gets easier as you're building the uh, kit because uh, there's less and less space on the board to actually fill in and you start to get more and more acquainted and familiar with the actual circuit board itself. Again, visual checks all the way, making sure that I'm happy with the way the components are going in, making sure I'm not making any mistakes with the soldering. Okay, so now it's the resistors. Again, we're using a little quarter watt resistors which go flat against the board here and I'm just folding the wires over quite close to the body of the component. 
That one didn't go quite in as square as I wanted, so I adjusted it with the uh, tweezers. And this one here, I couldn't actually read the colour code off of it because my eyesight's pretty poor these days. So I just used my meter just to double check the value of that resistor. So the trimmer resistor needs to go in now. Doesn't matter which way around this one goes in. So hold it flat against the board, bend the legs over so it doesn't plop back out again. And uh, on this one, I just soldered one pin in place and made sure it was nice and flat and uh, that held it in no problems at all. The beginning of the hardware needs to be installed now. So I'm installing a headphone socket here, a stereo headphone socket which is what I'm going to plug into the sound card on my computer. It takes a little bit more heat than the rest of the components, this one, because there's a lot of uh, grounding plane to it. Again, nicely laid out there. You can see it fits nice and squarely to the board. And after fitting the chips and a few more Molex connectors, that's the build complete. So sound cards, this is the sound card I usually use, but it's not gonna be any good for me here because it's got a mono microphone input. So you can purchase one of these. I got this one off of Amazon for about eight pounds. And that's got a stereo line in on it as well. And that's absolutely perfect for something like this. Uh, you're gonna need a stereo microphone input. So here we are, the kits were wired up. I've got uh, my sound card there. I've got a KX3 at the back there, plugged into a dummy load. Because I don't actually have a 40 meter antenna, so I'm just running a piece of wire out into the garden. My KX3 is tuned to 7150. And it's gonna play messages. And using HD SDR, I can prove that it's receiving a signal in or around about the 7150 mark, which is perfect. It's working beautifully. And I'm not going to show you how to configure the software here. I'm going to go into uh, another video showing you how to use and build and uh, configure the software better for using with the radio. And also some tricks and tips which I've learned as well using this kit uh, with the uh, SDR. And that's it. That's the Acorn 2 SDR receiver from Kanga Products. It's a fantastic little kit. I highly recommend it. And, uh, and so far, I've had a great deal of fun building it.